When we think about the most transformative innovations of the modern era, the automobile and the airplane top pretty much every list. These two inventions enabled the dispersion of people, goods, and ideas. They also gave us back time, forever changing the way we live, work, and engage with each other. Both inventions appeared during the early part of the 20th century, and we've been moving around pretty much the same way ever since. But things may be about to change as technological advances and a culture inspired by the impossible are converging to create a new era of urban mobility. I'm Jamie, the CEO and co-founder of Talon. We're building the world's first staged electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft system. We come from SpaceX. Stage rocketry is how you get performance out of rockets. It's a two-stage system. You get rid of the heavy part, the lift part, when you're done with it. So we kind of applied that same thinking here. My name is Evan Mukasey. Uh, I'm the CTO at Talon. How do we get the most out of battery electric flight to solve this sort of transportation problem? How do we allow people to disperse a little bit, a little bit more? So we want to catch an airplane in the air with another airplane. Um, and uh, we want to do that autonomously. Yeah, uh, so Jamie and I worked together for three years when we were at SpaceX. We were working on some Falcon 9 problems and a little bit of Falcon Heavy. Uh, both of us are, are pilots, both of us are into aviation, and we both kind of saw the inevitability of, of what was happening in, in the aviation space, and that's electrification of certain, certain airframe platforms. We wanted to try and understand what the natural extrapolation of what this tech could, could give you. Talon is aiming to make possible a vision of the future we've been promised for years now, but one that hasn't fully arrived yet. It's a future where flying cars reduce trips that take hours on the ground to minutes in the air. One where electricity and autonomy make traveling in the third dimension quieter, cleaner, and more cost-effective than ever before. After decades of false starts and failed projects, a new class of vehicle has finally emerged. It's called an eVTOL, and it promises to enhance our quality of life and transform the way we move people and goods across our cities. Vertical takeoff and landing is just what it sounds like. You take off without a runway, vertically like a helicopter, land like a helicopter. EV tolls in general, because you get rid of the maintenance issues, you're flying on electricity, are much cheaper than a helicopter, so about 3x cheaper. Uh, essentially, if you're taking an Uber Black, you could be taking an EV tall. The whole reason this industry is, is moving forward right now, this EV tall industry, is that battery energy density is at a usable place. It wasn't before. Motor power density, which is like how much power can you put out for a certain weight, is at a point where these are po vehicles are possible. You can put a bunch of smaller motors that are very powerful on an aircraft. Uh, that was not there before. Compared to a helicopter that has one giant rotor, uh, there's a lot of benefits to going to a bunch of smaller ones. You get redundancy, so if one fails, you don't fall out of the sky, uh, which is one of the huge problems with helicopters. It's one of the reasons they're very expensive and hard to maintain. It also enables you to go with different configurations uh, and be quieter. The eVTOL looks to open up entirely new markets while ushering in a new era of aviation being referred to as urban air mobility. They are a safer, quieter, and cleaner option than traditional helicopters. And at a price point equivalent to an Uber X, they could be a viable solution to reduce congestion and emissions in large cities. The industry is currently attracting a lot of capital and big named investors, and a few leaders are beginning to pull ahead in this race for the future. But most of these existing players are attacking the same corner of the market. Short hop trips across dense areas covering distances of about 50 to 60 miles. Up until now, the technology and imagination simply hasn't been there to perform longer trips. We see people doing long range, relatively long range for electric, which is thousand mile flights-ish commercial airliner projects. Then there's a lot of people doing urban air mobility, which is hopping over traffic in a city at short range flights, 50 miles, uh, vertical takeoff and landing. To us, the real win was doing like a middle range VTOL flight. So you can skip the traffic, skip the airports, but still travel a longer distance. So you're cutting out a lot of drive time. Nobody's doing that because batteries aren't good enough. It came about from the mission we were trying to go after. And the mission was, is how do we get long range and, and high capability from these, these aircraft while still using battery technology? 
coming from a rocketry background, we sort of understood the, the physics benefits that you get from staging. For example, a rocket separates on its way to, to orbit. These vehicles, uh, you need to perform a vertical flight maneuver, but also a horizontal flight maneuver. Uh, and so if you combine those capabilities into one vehicle, uh, you have to make engineering trade-offs between each of those phases of flight. Uh, and it kind of trickles down to every subsystem that you have to design are those trade-offs. Uh, and so staging refers to the term of separating out. Yeah, we're the only company doing a two-stage system, so it's a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft coupled with what essentially is a traditional aircraft. And the traditional aircraft is way more efficient in flight. You just don't have to carry all that stuff around. So you get a lot more range, a lot more speed, a lot more payload capability um, with that configuration. And then you have the add-on VTOL so you don't have to use a runway. Where does such a vision come from? It appears it just might be the zeitgeist of our time. The convergence of technology and a culture set on achieving the impossible. Inventors like Elon Musk and companies like SpaceX have quite literally blazed a path forward, leaving in their wake a generation of passionate builders seeking to claim their own corner of the future. It's an ethos, an attitude. It's about solving large and complex problems by first starting with fundamental questions. All the structures in aero design is just good experience, whether it's aircraft or rockets. As far as the docking goes, it's more of the thought process behind it. Like People looked at that and thought that's impossible. Like how do you get the guidance to take that rocket, re-enter it, fire up an engine again, and get it to precisely land on a pad? And nobody believed that was possible. Um, and then, but obviously we did it. So the, the ethos uh, at, at a company like that and, uh, and what we're trying to do here is sort of this first principles reasoning of, of, of what's possible. SpaceX is great at that. Uh, they, they look at these sort of these problems like reusable rocketry and look at the fundamental physics behind it and understand that, well, this is a very hard engineering problem, but it's not impossible. Um, and so we try and take that approach with all the problems that we're solving here as well. And so we look at two aircraft that you know, separate and recombine in the air and, and we look at that problem from a you know, technology perspective, a physics perspective, and we see it's a very hard engineering problem, but it's not impossible. It starts with fundamentals and a belief in what's possible, but ultimately it comes down to technological viability. The systems have to work at scale, and with the goal of transporting humans autonomously in the air, they have to be unfailing. Surprisingly, it's a feat that can be accomplished by a big vision and a small team. This is perhaps the most fascinating part of the story. With an ethos founded on first principles, a culture of rapid iteration, and a bold vision for the future, a small, inspired team can create a 21st century aerospace company. The really hard engineering problem, uh, well, it's all of it, but uh, the, the, certainly the unique aspect here is the recombining in the air. And sort of all the subsystems need to be designed around how to do that autonomously. Autonomy can be broken out into something called localization, uh, which is sensors and kind of trying to figure out where you are uh, in the world. Uh, and then it's also control and, and guidance and trajectory formulation. And so the cool thing is with software and a small team of, of dedicated uh, smart people, you can solve this sort of software embedded systems problem. So ultimately we are judged by what we're able to demonstrate uh, in, in real life. Uh, and so we're, we strongly believe in, in going out and testing and flying and actually uh, correlating what, what we're simulating in, in the real world. The things we've built are, are fundamentally uh, iterative platforms uh, so that we can test a lot of our autonomy right now. Um, and the cool thing is, is that it doesn't take a, a lot of money to build these sorts of things. SpaceX uh, was a way that kind of brought that ethos into the aerospace world. And that's where we learned that. The more you test, uh, the more you learn up front uh, that your assumptions were wrong when you were doing the original design. And so it's a, it's a way of doing the most basic test you can to get the most information out of it so you can move to the next step because you're always going to be wrong. And so how do you find that out as early as possible? By breaking something and then iterating on it. Um, and that's important because we, we like kind of pushing boundaries. And so we're not afraid of going out and flying and 
maybe crashing and then coming back and, and learning why we crashed and then sort of do it again and, and get a little better. Talon is getting closer to proving out their vision, but they, along with the industry at large, still have a long ways to go. The major players in the space are aiming to be fully operational by 2025, but to see these vehicles transporting people at scale, there are some hurdles to overcome. Gaining certification for the novel eVTOL category vehicle will be a major challenge, as will putting the infrastructure in place, both in the air and on the ground, to ensure these vehicles can fly safely and effectively. And while the challenges are large, the energy and optimism is palpable. There's a real sense of innovation based on fundamentals. And now it's about proving that the impossible is, well, that it's possible. And once that's accomplished, we will truly be living in the future. Yeah, there are a few things that really excite me. Um, the one, in the end, uh, this will fundamentally help people disperse uh, and help people sort of get a little bit more space for themselves and a little bit more time for themselves. And, and that's something that I, I think we all sort of want uh, and strive for. Long term, ideal use case, we're in Los Angeles. Uh, you walk out of your house, take a short drive or walk to a vertiport, which is essentially a fancy helipad. Um, you hop in one of our vehicles, you take off, the aircraft separate, you are now... You're now in the future. One where you can get places faster, saving time, and opening up new possibilities for how we live and work. Perhaps it's a future where the air is cleaner, cities are less congested, and transportation spreads opportunity to more people and places. It's not as far off as some might think because it's being built right now.